All right, all right. What's up? What's up, guys? How y'all doing? Yeah, I hope we get a couple of people in tonight. But today, I'm basically going to continue my uh, how to become series, so to speak. I, I kind of started this series, you know, uh, a couple weeks ago or whatever, where I wanted to cover how to become a particular, you know, position in IT. And so that's where I'll continue, you know, that uh, whole um, series by now talking about how to become a Linux administrator. So welcome, guys. Uh, excited to do this stream. Um, let me let me see if a couple if a couple people are here going on and um, like the video as well as share if you can. Um, I also drop the link for any other professionals that may want to come up and talk about this topic if you want to. But I'll just kind of cover and oh, shout out to my man, Gabe. Uh, good to see you in the building, bro. I definitely appreciate it, man. You showing support and everything. I definitely appreciate it. Hey, we keep tossing this, you know, uh, this money back and forth because I come over and support you. You support me. You know, I appreciate it, bro. You know what I'm saying? Definitely appreciate it. You know what I'm saying? Um, but yeah, if you guys are unfamiliar with Gay Bay, Gay Bay has a channel called Struggle Security. Make sure you check out his channel, you know what I'm saying? Uh, where he talks and helps people get into the cybersecurity field. You know what I'm saying? So definitely a great brother, definitely puts out a lot of good information. And I definitely want to support him. That's that's why I push people his way whenever I can. But nah, I appreciate it, bro. Definitely appreciate it, man. Um, but uh, shout out to everybody here. Go down and hit that like button. You know what I'm saying? If this is your first time, like I said, this is I'm going to continue my how to become series where I'm talking about different positions, just telling people how to get into those areas within IT because we all know IT is um, it's almost like an umbrella, you know what I'm saying, with the, all the different points on the umbrella around to hold the, you know, the whole IT sector afloat, so to speak, to block the rain, so to speak, or protect the organization, however you want to use that um, metaphor, so to speak. Uh, but those different points are different areas of IT. That's the way I, I see it. You got your cybersecurity point, you got your, you know, database administrator point, you got your systems administrator point, uh, network engineer, that's a point of IT, you know, you can get into. And I just want to help people, you know, figure out how to get into these positions. So, uh, like I said, this is the how to become a Linux administrator. And let me start off. I am not a Linux administrator. And that's, that's something that um will happen you know once i <laughs> uh as i go through this series it's a lot of positions i have not done but based on my experience i can tell you uh, a way to actually get into it and don't just take my word for it i always tell people to do research and find um other people that are working these positions to give you a better understanding because they'll be closer to those positions to provide the proper information but i can give you an overview so to speak. And shout out to my man Distro Tube. I see you in the building. Good to see you. He says, uh, oh, and let me not skip anybody else. Everybody is 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 important over here on the channel. I definitely like to shout out everybody. So King318, he said, What's up, man? He said, What's good? Uh big big bad bull, uh GBG. Um, yeah, shout out to you, bro. Peace, man. Good to see you, bro. Earl Owens, my brother, good to see you, bro. Um, and then uh Disho too, my man, my my Louisiana brethren. Uh he says good evening. Oh uh Josh, my Louisiana brother. Uh what the heck's going on with our Saints? Hey man, I do not know, bro. They they looking straight trash, man. It's it's crazy out here right now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And and I know people are watching football. Um and so hey, um just tap in with me if you can, but you know, if you got to go to your game or whatever, that's fine as well. You can come back and watch the replay. But hey, Disho Tube, I did hit you back on Patreon. Um, I totally missed your message that you sent me a while back. And I know this was like way in April. Uh, <laughs> and so I apologize. As soon as I shut down my dish, my Patreon, um, I stopped uh, 
I, I just shut it all the way down and I stopped checking all the messages. So I totally missed that opportunity with zero Linux. So, um, but I sent you all my information in case you want to, you know, link up in the future. I definitely, you know, appreciate it, you know, in case you want to, you know, link up in any way uh, and we can help each other out uh, in any way, man. I, I, I appreciate you coming through. Uh, so Cornell's nails, what's up? He said, shout out to y'all professor black ops in the building. Yeah. Hey, I put the link, I pinned the link up there. If you want to come up, you know, as well. Uh, cause I think you did some systems administration or Linux administration work, uh, which, you know, like I said, I haven't done it. I've ran into these systems in the field, you know, in the wild, you know, but I haven't actually been a list Linux systems administrator. So let's start off with uh, um, the first article I kind of want to go through and I'll just kind of briefly go through it. And this guy tells his experience over on Red Hat. Uh, he created an article. I wrote an article for Red Hat um, just talking about how he actually got into it and how to become a Linux sys admin based on his experience. And like I said, this this article was written uh, in 2021. So I don't know. I don't know how 100 percent relevant all the information is in here. I read through it. I skimmed through it um, and he just kind of covers how he actually got into it. So starting off, he says, uh, when you ask kids, what they want to be when they grow up no one will say i want to be a system admin and i 100 percent agree you know and i wasn't thinking about computers when i was a kid but he says how did i become one so or end up becoming one so uh starting out basically it was within the cold white walls of a data center hearing the humming sounds coming from the server cage with the thick legacy unix manuals lined up neatly in one corner room and in the distance the system admin at this workstation working in in shift 24 7. this is how a vividly this is how i vividly remember starting as a systems or a linux systems admin uh a good 15 years ago he says yes i was one of those hooded jackets sitting quietly at a desktop workstation uh, with a vendor proprietary Unix manual on one side of of me and coffee on the other. So quiet nights at work and very conducive for studying shell scripting uh, while all the systems are behaving as they should. And there are no changes or activities to implement during your shift. This is how it all began for me. So he was coming from a, this kind of covers how he, started his background he says many of us ended up in it jobs without the original intent i studied and got my degree and license in electronics and communications engineering and th and that's true that's one thing about this um it in general you know it's a lot of different people come from a lot of different backgrounds <laughs> you know which is is super cool like my man uh gabe a. he he's actually a what is it a nuclear engineer or he's an engineer um he went to school for engineering and ended up in it so ended up in, and he he's told his story on his channel so definitely check it out uh but enter the telecom uh industry as a cadet engineer and rotate it to different teams on the intelligence uh network team i was introduced to telecom charging and billing apps running on proprietary unix operating system and that's something you'll see <laughs> you'll see in a lot of these organizations uh they'll have some proprietary software running on something like a linux system and a lot of people are afraid to touch them i know uh professor black ops talks about that a lot of times <laughs> how there's the, those systems that people are scared to touch because <laughs> they'll break they're very delicate you know systems and people don't know how to actually use them or manage them so they just kind of sit there and that this was like in the 90s early 2000s you know era you, they had these systems out here that people were scared to touch um but it says many people started their career would probably wonder if it's worth shifting to the it industry uh this might think they're wasting oh 
they might think they're wasting some of their expertise and credentials they picked up from their academic studies. I say it depends on what's your drive. Uh, I feel lucky to have been given a chance to do this, uh, ending up loving it and the perks it offers, pay grade, flexibility, more opportunity, and ultimately enjoying what I do. I also, it also has its cons, being a system admin from Mission Critical 24 seven systems, for example, it can come with extreme pressures and demands. And I 100% agree with that. Early in my career, I did a lot of 24 um, uh, and hold on, Professor Black Ops is here. But yeah, um, I did a lot of 24 seven, you know, system, you know, managing, you know, earlier in my career. I, curr I currently do it now as well. Um, 24 seven, you know, system maintenance, system, you know, management at the end of the day. And it comes with extreme pressures and demands. Yeah, but it's challenging and stressful situations can help shape, shape you for the bright career that lies ahead. Now, uh, what's up, Professor Black Ops? Let me let me go on and finish this up, man. Then we can, we can get into it. But I got a I got a couple other articles I want to go through, and it's not really articles. It's just showing people the pathway, and it's all based on um, the jobs that are currently out there to become a Linux administrator. And uh, so, hold on, right here, uh, progressing and moving forward. So back in the day, as a neophyte uh, system admin and operations. I worked on mundane and repetitive tasks in a work shift. There are routines and checklists to follow to ensure the systems are working correctly and in good state. Uh, most of them manual, time consuming, which is different now because of all the automation, um, time consuming and tedious. I'd say it's what you make of the challenges in front of you that helps shape your direction in a career. So it's good advice, good advice. Um, now, instead of doing the same old thing over and over, I started writing individual scripts to handle them uh, with the support and collaboration of teammates and scenarios. These small automation steps became more valuable as they're assembled into a consolidated terminal user interface, adding logic, error protection, and event notifications. So yeah, he, he basically, that's one of the things I've said on this channel a lot um just constantly constantly learn you know and that'll improve uh your job and it'll also help you stand out especially when it comes to these positions so don't just do the minimum you know what i'm saying it looks like that's what he did based on the article you know he basically collaborated with his teammates um and pushed for a deeper knowledge of it uh and then got some training or or figured this stuff out on his own and uh, push forward. And I think he talks about that right here. I remember reading that. He says, while developing these simple forms of automation, I also learned more complex units, commands, uh, techniques, and a deeper knowledge of the system I manage. Yeah. And that's one thing I guess I've always, you know, strive for and why I play around with Linux so much is because you you gain that knowledge you know you understand you learn new commands and that's why i do videos on new commands and a lot of times those commands that i've ran across of they they're very new to me like i just learned out learned about them and i went through the man page i went through the manual and got a better understanding and knowledge of how it actually interacts with the system as well as manage files, documents, and things on the system or kernel modules, all that stuff. So you get a deeper understanding of it. So, and that's in any area, not just Linux, you know, systems administration, um, playing around with those systems. And that's why it's important to have a home lab. So you can play around with those systems and get a deeper knowledge of how it actually works. Um, now, let me. Let me finish this, uh, Professor Black Ops, because I want to hear your thoughts. Uh, these are win-win situations for my team and me. Things become more efficient and less stressful for those who need to run these tasks on a busy work schedule or shift with high severity incidents and pressure on their shoulders. Uh, we learn to collaborate and develop deeper working relationships. So, yeah, that was that was dope. And and one of the things I really wanted to point out out of this article. Um, he brought up Ansible, and I know that's one thing that that's becoming very popular over at Red Hat. Um, they 
they are, you know, really pushing Ansible and they've been doing that for the last couple of years. They've been, they added Ansible Fest to their, um, to their uh, conferences. They'll have Ansible Fest as well as Red Hat Fest. Um, and Ansible is a big push and that is for automation, collaboration, pretty much the same thing he was doing in earlier in his career by learning the system. Uh, Ansible kind of handles a lot of that by understanding how to write that code and you can manage a lot of the aspects of the system. Um, and then he goes into formal courses, certifications. I won't go through everything, but I want to read at least the last statement. He says, being a system admin today is fun and flexible, fulfilling and rewarding. I am sure we all have our stories, which we all do. It's, and it's different, you know, vastly different across the board. Um, and tell about how we started. Whether you're a seasoned system administrator, uh, beginning in a new role, advancing your career, or even thinking about making a shift, each of us will have an evolving system admin story. So make sure you make it interesting, exciting, and fruitful by making us all the technology and resources, or hold on, by making us of all the technology, making use, I'm sorry, I'm crazy, <laughs> making use of all the technology and resources at your fingertips. Yeah, so that was a good article, you know, to kind of kick off, you know, what I was saying or what I was gonna cover throughout here. And it's basically a lot of certifications and the pathways you could take to become a Linux administrator. And let me say this before you jump in right fast, Professor Black Ops, um, it's two, I would say it's two, two sides to Linux, um, especially on, on YouTube, so to speak. Uh, and I'll just use that as an example, and I'll bring this up right fast. I wanted to show you guys. So if you search Linux, if you just search Linux in general, you'll see a lot more desktop Linux videos, but that doesn't necessarily translate to Linux administration work. Uh, a lot of this the, has to do with desktop environments, um, the applications you can use on it that are equivalent to, let's say, Windows or so. And, and it's a big, you know, community behind that, um, desktop Linux. And that's a totally different area from, you know, the systems administration, uh, Linux administration side of it. Uh, and so I wanted to make that you know, distinction kind of clear. And there's nothing wrong with looking at that, but if you want to become a systems administrator um, by understanding these different desktop environments or configuring certain things or making things look pretty, you know, in a terminal or making the operating system look pretty, um, that's, that's just uh, a plus. You see what I'm saying? It's not a negative, it's a plus, um, but, what happens as a list a Linux systems administrator is you're working in the command line majority of the time. You're not going to see any desktop environments most of the time, at least from my experience and majority of the experience I hear from other people. It's going to be hands on command line. You in there uh, running these commands, um, using an automation tool, which is our command line based. Um, not saying any of that desktop experience won't help. But that's where, you know, I'm just trying to let you guys know that it's a clear distinction between the two. So what's up, Professor Black Ops? Good, good to see you, bro. I know what's I was up? long winded. No, you good. You good. Yeah. How you doing today, man? I'm good. I'm good. I was hoping you came through, man. Yeah, you know I heard you called me. I come through. I'm, I'm kind of like you. I worked with a lot of Linux administrator. I was mm -hmm. a web admin and an app admin. So mm -hmm. I. I did a lot with Linux, but I wasn't tr a traditional Linux administrator. So our Linux admin would set it up, then you know they would give us a couple users for the uh, web uh, app. We were doing uh, Apache and Tomcat back then. So and two is I was an Oracle DBA and it was running on Linux. So once again, we would get some Oracle users, sysadmin, and as you well know, build it on top of of Linux. So um, the weird thing is, kind of we kind of talking about. No, you good? Oh, I, I thought you got my camera. No, 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 I was good. fixing my camera. Oh, you good? <laughs> so, but we were talking about that. Um, Linux admin skills are great because even I do a lot on AWS. So when I'm spinning up EC2s and building stuff, a lot of times I got to be out on that machine. I got to move around. I got to check the disk space to make sure if something 
if my script doesn't work, you gotta be able to get in Linux and figure out why it didn't work, right? So you need basic mm -hmm. Linux and skill. The two now, if you got DevSecOps, DevOps, all that really is a part of Linux and admin. Cause like you talk about with automation now, it's not like you building one server, you building a 25, 30, somebody in the chat put 3,000 <laughs> servers yeah. in there. So I've never built that many, but I've actually probably built 10 or 15 at the most. But no, I think those skills are uh, warrant, and you still at the raw level, you you still gonna need a Linux administrator when something goes right, or really to set up your base image, mm -hmm. right? So the image you're gonna use to, we call it a go image that you're gonna use to build your EC2s, build your VMs. Somebody needs to build a base image to make sure it's correct. And a lot of people know me, I do security. so. I give the security checks to the Linux ad, admin and we talk about you done some sticks. Shout out to Gabe. You don't like yeah. sticks, but you know, some C <laughs> we don't have to be sticks, CIS. Then your two favorite, you know, I sent you the sticks on Ubuntu. So Ubuntu got uh, I guess yeah. you could do federal work on Ubuntu. So you can do CIS or uh Stigs on Ubuntu, which is basically 300 checks you need to do to harden down your uh, Linux uh system to make sure it's secure to do federal or government work yeah 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 definitely definitely not uh great input i i appreciate you know you adding that and um let me let me hit this uh one little article because i wanted to point out these two highlighted um highlighted uh sentences on here um are you considering becoming a linux administrator best part of becoming a linux administrator comes from your resume <laughs> of actual linux administrators and so yeah that that tells you right there where to look and that's why i'm gonna go to the jobs as well as uh a couple of people that i know that are linux administrators on linkedin uh just to look at their background so you can see well I won't show their stuff because I don't know if they want to be shown on here. So I just show the jobs. I go from there. But that's where you can get the best information. That's why LinkedIn is important. You link up with people in the positions that you're trying to get to. So I definitely want uh, you guys to do that and build up your network on LinkedIn to, to handle that so you can get that information. But it says the following guy shows the most common education experience and skills you'll need to become a Linux administrator. And this was, I think this is 2023. Uh, based on what I saw when I searched for this, but most companies will require Linux administrators to have a bachelor's degree. So you'll see bachelor's degree in there uh, in a related field. And I want to go down that road, Professor Black. I swear, <laughs> degrees up. versus certifications. You oh, know, man. yeah. Just, but like, but but like we talked about, it's not us. Sometimes you got great gatekeepers, and I work for big federal um, companies, big federal consultant companies that do that. And I push back on them, but they all asking for degrees at that level because the boomers got them. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And <laughs> kind of don't want people uh, coming behind them, you know, with less less of what they had to do, you know, but, getting yeah. into these positions. It seemed but, but, like it. <laughs> yeah, I was on another channel. We were talking about that. But like we talked about is I got my computer science degree in 1990. I was doing mainframe. That shit don't yeah. even exist anymore. So you still have to keep current. You still need to keep searching. You need to keep grinding. So that's always a catch-22. Go ahead. Keep taking mm -hmm. down. Read that. Go on, read that. Nah, you're right. Um, but uh, typical Linux administrator jobs require one or two uh, years of experience. And I know that's true because I've been searching you know, on LinkedIn, just trying to see about how much experience they're looking for. And that's about right. I've seen one to three years. Um, now, becoming a Linux administrator, standard job titles include systems administrator, which a lot of times uh, Linux administrators, they're sometimes um, named in the position as a systems administrator, because that's essentially what you are. You're a systems nice. administrator, whether it's Windows, Linux, nice. or, you know, whatever you have, or some AWS cloud solutions, whatever, you're a systems administrator. Um, Linux systems administrator, you'll see that as well, and the Unix Linux uh, administrator. And then hiring managers expect Linux administrators to have soft skills like analytical skills, but that's all the positions, communication skills and problem solving skills. That's that's part of the IT, I don't know, uh, skills that you need to get. Uh, right, Professor Black Ops? Yeah, I'm my yeah. fault. I'm laughing. Uh, shout out to Stephen S. He said, damn, mainframes? Yeah, player, I'm that old. I used to do JCL on COBOL, man. That's how old I am. The real quick, while I keep it taking hand a little business, shout out to my man, Network Bruh, coming in. Go check your Discord or your general tab. I put your CGIS, uh law enforcement uh, um, 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 
security checks in there, man, for your for your Cisco in there. Go check that out. But uh, yeah, I'm old people, man. I'm 55, man. I've been in this game a long time. And shout out to the other guy. Yeah, I used to do AS400 on IBM too, man. I've been in this game a lot. That JCL money was good, man. JCL oh, Oracle yeah. money got me to that young six figure. Shout out to the six figure club, man. That that yeah. mainframe money was good. But, Back in, I used to walk around with wing tips working with IBM. Go ahead, keep it taking. <laughs> yeah, all I am. I'm Go glad you, I'm glad you went back to the chat because I, I almost forgot I was trying to focus on the on the article. But I got you. I shout got out you. to Go a couple ahead. people, you know. I see coming through uh tech coach Ralph. I definitely appreciate you. You know, uh with the super chat, he says, Thank you for the amazing content, very helpful uh to me as a QA engineer. Um, quality assurance, right? Quality assurance. Is that what QA is? Yep. Yeah, quality yeah. assurance. Yeah, mm -hmm. I worked with those guys. A lot of times I got to give them the security check so they, they do the quality to make sure everything's built right. Then from a yeah. developer standpoint, long story short, from a security standpoint, if you're doing agile, we got to make sure they're doing the whole process right from a security standpoint. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Tech Coach Ref, you said, shared your MySQL tutorial with these with those uh coaches yeah i appreciate it man i definitely appreciate you sharing yeah and if you guys are interested you want to learn my sequel i did a whole two hour course on my sequel just showing you guys how to actually use it and become you know proficient with actually uh at least the basics of understanding my sequel setting it up and uh running queries building databases tables all that stuff so cover let, me add, on, let me add on that real quick yeah yeah check out that uh you said the my sequel Mm -hmm. um aws you can spin up mysql denaro roar is actually a hybrid of mysql and that's their enterprise super duper uh no downtime you can have it scale across all the world but that, it's actually a mysql a high, uh i was calling a hybrid that they put extensions on to make sure it worked right in the cloud so if you okay. master keep it techie you can jump in it's called a roar you can pick postgres or mysql so Get get uh keep it techy my sequel and just transfer an R and Aurora then you can start getting you some paper. Go ahead. Oh man, I'm glad you brought that up. I I might that might need have to be my next course, man. <laughs> Go Aurora. check it out, man. I appreciate Aurora. it. Yeah, I got yeah. you, man. I'm, I'm gonna have to pay you a percentage, man. If, 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 all good. if I sell it, no, I'm just playing. <laughs> it's all good. But yeah, check it out. It's called kind of Aurora. That's they thing. They got a straight my sequel, but then they got their Aurora once again. They put tick. You can uh scale it across all their <laughs> regions of the planet. It a multi balance. It's it's a little pricey. You get it a year for free while you practice, but the my, most of ninety five percent of the MySQL queries and stuff is gonna work. And you just gotta figure okay. from an architect their stenches and how you build and spin it up, different regions, DR, all that. You know, downtown up down time up time, and how you set that up. Yeah, and before I forget, uh, shout out to Steve's very own. Make sure you check out his channel as well. He's a content creator. Uh, he he puts out a, a lot of great stuff on his channel as well. Make sure you go check him out as well. But uh, one thing I was going to add, yeah, uh, AWS seems like they're, they're doing a lot of that, uh, just recreating, and all of them are doing that, all these big cloud platforms, because okay. they want to just keep people on their products. But AWS, I did a video, what, two weeks ago about um, – Amazon Linux showing you guys how to set oh, that fine. up on them, just playing yeah, around. I saw that. I yeah, saw that. but it's basically a one-to-one -one comparison to Red Hat. It's a fork. They tell you they yep. fork. If you look in there, you can see the it still said Red Hat in there. But yeah, yeah. they forked it. But yep. they put some cool stuff in there to make it work in the cloud. But now nah, that's the cool thing is, and I think that's a good thing they did on purpose. So if you good at Red Hat on prem, you can move it into the cloud. Most of this thing's gonna stay. All the big databases. Then shout out to my man. He put the uh, Dynamo DB from the NoSQL. I don't do a lot of NoSQL. Shout out to Bowman. That's something I need to uh, get into from another database. But once again, everybody know I'm an AWS fan guy. That that's my um, uh, cloud of choice, right? So that and two is they they give you a little of everything. Anything you want, you got money. They want you to spend it with them. <laughs> but go ahead. Yeah, so yeah, exactly. They give you everything. They want to keep you over there. Yeah, yeah. So. Um, but um let me let's let's go back to the article a little bit and finish up these last mm -hmm. ones but hiring, i mean most of this is stuff soft skills certain things that are needed for you know any it job so gotcha. uh just kind of you know look at that and and i'll put these links down in the description or i drop them down all the links that i use today uh so if you watch the replay you can 
uh, keep up with it, but this is on Zipia. Uh, it says it takes an average of three to six months of job training to become a Linux administrator. And that's, that's just their, you know, opinion and not saying it's wrong, but, um, just look at other resources and, um, cause it, I don't like when people guarantee or not. And I know it's not a guarantee. They just put an average out there, yeah, but um, it could take you longer. It could take you, you know, right at that or within that time frame that they're putting out there. But this is one of the most important ones I wanted to kind of cover. But getting a Linux administration, uh, Linux administrator certification like Red Hat certified systems administrator. So the RHCSA will help you earn more. And so now, and that'll also help you get into the field as well. So they, they just said earn more, but yeah, that'll help you get in the field as well. Uh, but there are other certifications I want to point you guys to first, you know, before that. And also another thing with these Linux administration jobs, you'll see that certain certifications are accepted, um, in the place of college so yeah up here to sit at the top it says bachelor's degree you know or related well some of these certifications they're so you know difficult to pass and they weed out the week so to speak you know what i'm saying <sighs> that they're equivalent to a lot of uh, um training that you would get from getting a traditional you know college degree so just throwing that out there as well and if you want to add go ahead PBO. Yeah, my only little pushback, you're 100% right, is when you're in competition, though, if they got a degree in that, right, you out. So, yeah, that's <laughs> but, true. That's true. But, too, like we just talked about, if I did mainframe and I don't have any certs, you know, what good am I, right? Because, yeah, we talked about this technology never stops. You always got to continue to learn. And that's the good and bad thing about it. I tell people, I know Blackberry programmers were making 100. Now they out of job, right? So, you need to make sure you catch the next big thing my next big thing is securing the cloud aws and pbl about to retire so you got to figure out what you want to master get into it and linux once again it's a, it's a base foundation so if mm -hmm. you're going to be an architect devops DevSecOps, even security because i got to do security checks so if i'm talking to keep it techie or i'm an interview i know a, a guy i'm cool with he a linux administrator when i talk to him i got to understand it because i got to give him security checks so we got to be able to have a conversation so i got to understand you know group user or other you know there's basic things you need to understand you know uh a user with a password a user without the password you know all that keep it techie so you oh, need yeah. to get out how to set all that up from a security perspective and understand mm -hmm. yeah and shout out to my man network bro for the support i definitely appreciate it man salute to you for coming through and uh showing support showing love yeah, welcome back sure yeah welcome back yeah definitely welcome i see back, him man. putting up videos you know yeah, i was uh, he was shout out to today. Him. i showed up and gave him a stig man i went yeah i missed him so much i gave him a stig in in the, in the live man so we can, we can get back to it go ahead i gave him a stig. see that's what happened that work bro <laughs> when, you, when you take breaks man i didn't even get an alert for your channel bro so i might have to unsubscribe subscribe again and then i noticed that something you know that happens like we stop putting up content it seems like it'll stop alerting people you know oh, right wow. in the beginning of you coming back i didn't even know you went live i would have came over and supported but nah shout out to you bro make sure you guys check out network bro's channel he covers a lot of networking cisco equipment going through though that that 101 i remember he went through that a while back uh and i know he's on another because i just shared your video the other day um he's going through another training a uh, book or course or something he's always going through something that he's learning and just sharing it with the people his experience through it and also teaching you know so i really salute him for that and putting out that information to help people uh on that cisco side which i know nothing about <laughs> i know a little bit but not uh, yeah network bro is where to go so yeah we put me and him gonna do a collab man we, we're gonna stick one of his we're gonna stick an ASA or the new firepower, I guess, is the new ASA. So we probably collab and do about 10 stigs on something and lock something down. Go ahead, keep it tech. For sure, for sure. And also, Savage Scientists, I see you in the building. Salute to you, bro. Uh Tam, what's up? I see you. Shout out to Tam. Uh, man. Yeah, I don't want to uh miss anybody. Uh no, man, every time good I, to see you. Yeah, every oh, time I talk to Tam, I'll be feeling a little poor, man. I gotta get my money up, man. I'll be feeling poor when I talk to Tam, man. I'm gonna have to get my CISP so I can get some more money. Yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, and uh, 
Tim knows a lot more. And that's why I say, don't just lean on me as the, the only person that knows about this uh -huh. stuff. Definitely, I try to push people to, to everybody that's uh -huh. out here because we are putting out good information. Tim um, be on my list. So I yeah. just send everybody to Tim, man. Yeah, Tam, Tam, Tam is on on point with it yeah. uh, over there. At Women in Linux. So make sure y'all subscribe to her as well. I, I, I hate. I, I, I don't know. I just like to share other people, man. Like I'm not the only no, one fine. out here, you know. So no, I'm like you, man. I don't know yeah. everything too. It's some some of my stuffs. Oh man, so I give you my opinion. I'm <laughs> see. You. Go check out Keep It Techie, man. I be telling yeah. you, go check them out, man. I don't, I don't know everything. Go ahead. Man. All right. So that's all I wanted to kind of cover on here on this. Uh, video and I just I mean on this article and I just wanted to go right into certifications you should be looking at to become a Linux administrator and maybe you you've heard of it and maybe you haven't but I was gonna go through a list of uh, areas you should look into as well and like I said this is all based on jobs I'm seeing out there uh, that or Linux administrators. So, uh, and I'll show you guys a list of jobs and actually let's start off there. Let's go over to the list of jobs that I find. I just searched Linux administrator in the United States. Um, and I went through a couple of the jobs that I saw. And let's let's start off. So um, like I said, in that or other article, you'll see the bachelor's degree, you'll see it in some positions, uh, but you also see in the requirements or preferred that they'll accept some experience over that as well as certifications over that. But you'll see the bachelor's degree, uh, one to three years experience, Linux based, and then they, they talk about the Linux distributions as well. And this is the important part. So that's why it's good to go through training that covers these three distributions. So uh, Rocky Linux is the same as Red Hat. So it, it, you could really say two, so Red Hat, Ubuntu, because anything you can do in Red Hat, you can do a Rocky Linux, because that's a one-to-one -one comparison as well. Uh, demonstrate diagnostic skills. Some of them you'll see vSphere or VMware or C Citrix virtualization, which I really hate Citrix. <laughs> I, know, man. I don't know I, about you, Professor Black Eyes, but I didn't ran into some oh. system networks, man. C Citrix, I always hated troubleshooting that, bro. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I guess my one of my guys I really, really trust, he said it got better over the last three or four years. I know with the last the last time I tried to use it probably was 20 and 10 years ago, and it just couldn't scale when I was at DOD. I heard the scaling's okay. a lot better when I'm at home, but I'm like you. If I tell people I wouldn't use Citrus. <laughs> yeah, take but, it out uh, the network. Remove that out the network. Yeah, Move those so servers we, over to the regular yeah, network. <laughs> we, we're at DOD. We got enough down almost fist fight, man, because the you know, their IT wanted us to use it, and we were consultants on every like, nah, we ain't using this. You're gonna make us fail. So, <laughs> so nah, you set us up for failure. Yeah, you we know said, nah, we ain't doing that. <laughs> Y'all paid us too much. I think I was working for Lockheed Martin back then. I was a set of Lockheed, and everybody's like, nah, we ain't doing because it just had a bad rep. But I think that that changed over time. Well, like I said, my buddy said they did some over the last three years and he said it worked pretty well and he said he was super surprised so i don't know man i'm not, i'm about to change my thought pattern go ahead <laughs> yeah yeah um and then also let's see um solid understanding of tcp dns uh active directory dns or bind mm -hmm. uh which is you know that's that's open source that that's right. typically what's used on uh on uh for dns servers on uh linux uh dhcp right. which you can do on linux as well ssl uh tls so certs uh mm -hmm. acme routing firewall and associated with diagnostic methodology that's so, network bro we need to call up network yeah. bro no I'll just play <laughs> yeah <laughs> well i cover a lot of that in my course and i did right. um just use mine as the only i mean there's plenty of courses out here that cover linux no. but i cover all this stuff in my course so you can check that out and 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 uh learn about that there and then uh shell scripting so bash awk say oh that's what i do i do yeah. corn shell awk and said you cut because cut, mm -hmm. we used to do flat files so you'd be cutting them Redame and stuff on the fly so it, so it can go into your database and stuff. Now, that's mm -hmm. all stuff most people don't do. Um, most people do Python or PHP for their scripting now, but I'm old. Yeah. I still do corn shell. Man. Okay. Okay. I'm a yeah, corn and, shell guy. And keep in mind, guys, this is a senior 
Linux administrator. Oh, wow. It's not a junior. This is not uh, just a regular uh, Linux administrator. I just wanted to point that out. So they are asking for a lot. And, you know, with that bachelor's degree, it looks like it's required for this position. But, you know, um, this is this covers for juniors as well. A lot of this just understanding uh, a lot of this area right up in here. So uh, experience with automation. This is one of the things I was going to point out heavy. So you need to look into automation if this is something you want to do. So Puppet, Chef, Ansible. And I got links to all that up here. That I was going to show you guys the websites for it, uh, for the automation. And like I said, Red Hat, that's one of the things they really pushing. Uh, that was one of the things they, they covered at this uh, last conference I went to, uh, Ansible. Ansible was, was covered a lot, you know, in the courses, um, the trainings that they had to in at the Red Hat conference. So Ansible is is something they really trying to push for people to use or understand for nice. Linux administration. Nice. Yep. Nice. Yep. And so let's see. Um, ability to work independent. You know, a lot of this is kind of like your your soft skills right up in here. Uh working with you know stakeholders and presenting, all that stuff or whatever, communication skills good to go but the preferred is where i wanted to cover a little bit more so experience with uh, rail clones auto install ubuntu git and git lab so that's another port of linux you know so to speak it's i mean of course it's an application you install on linux uh git to work with you know you can create git repositories or code repositories you know using git um so that that's important to understand as well uh, high performance computing experience with working with higher education settings. Um, any industry recognized Linux administration engineer certification. So this is what I, I, I see a lot. It says any. It doesn't really point to a specific one. Now, I see a lot of them that say Red Hat, you know, enterprise, um, you know certified systems administrator i see that but i'm also seeing starting to see a lot of industry recognized linux administrations and i'll cover some of the other ones out here uh that you know you may want to look into so experience with working with mysql marion db if you guys didn't know marion db is basically a, a clone or a fork of mysql marion db came about because um oracle I don't know if they closed sourced it or whoever developed MySQL. I think they they created Marion DB from what I remember. Yeah, um, and it, it's just a fork. It's the same yeah. exact application. So all the commands work the same. It's just the open source version versus I think kind of closed source a little bit now under Oracle. Yep. Right. Yep. Correct. Okay. Okay. Oracle, Oracle buying everything in charge for. <laughs> yeah. Like we, we got money, we're gonna buy it and try to charge for it. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So Marin DB is out there for anyone if if you can't. I mean, MySQL and Marin DB is in most of the repositories for any Linux server out there. So you can install either or, but uh Marion is just like I said, it's a fork and all the MySQL commands work the same. Just right. just wanted to point that out. Um, let's see experience with AWS, Azure Cloud Environments, and that's right. one thing you're gonna start seeing for everything. Uh, AWS and Azure, and then you're also going to start seeing not just one cloud platform. You're going to see both of them or three of them. GCP, I think, is out there as well. You, you're seeing a market share for that as well. But AWS, Azure, they want that multi-cloud. If you want to chime in, Professor Blackhouse, as well, you can. No, you hear this. Shout out to Tam. Multi-cloud is the future. Um, yep. You got to be able to handle bulk because each one has specialties and strengths so i think especially a bigger company they're gonna i think they're gonna start using both so you're gonna have to get that interoperability and just try to figure out how that looks and how that actually works mm -hmm. yep and then uh experience with containerization technology they're gonna want to start seeing that as well or not start they've been looking for this so people with docker experience Kubernetes. I've never used Aptainer or Singularity. I've heard of it, but never, never used it before. But Docker, I know is heavy. Kubernetes is heavy as well. Right. So 
Yeah. Yeah, that, that's my 2024 goals. Hopefully, just get to CISP and start getting on containers. AWS, too, they have their service container. You can run EKS or ECS is their container version of that where they handle the underlying infrastructure. But once again, it's a multi uh, cloud, multi container, and you need to figure out how to, you know, do all, do all that so you can be a senior and make all the money like Tim. Now, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. Uh, so yeah, that's one of the main ones I wanted to cover, but they had like a Linux systems administrator job down here. It kind of covers, uh, some of the same, same stuff. Oh, you had something you wanted? Yeah. Let me just touch on that. Go back to that one real quick. And, and okay. two, it's a senior and keep the mm -hmm. tech, you know, this, even though you a senior Linux administrator and we use our Linux administrator, when we put an Oracle database on there. We got to work with them correctly because. They got to make sure the memory right. It was semaphore locks and all of that <laughs> stuff in there. It's, I, some of that stuff I know because I installed it, but they really know the intricate and out of that. Then, as you see in there, they got the sand. So Linux administrator usually oh, work yeah. the sand. They got to cut up the disk to figure out how many megs and stuff. Some of mm -hmm. it, sometime in Oracle, it doesn't let you grow. You need to say, I need a, a terabyte. And once you use it up, you need to request more. So the yep. Linux administrator drives all of that. And I was a web admin. He handled the SSL keys. I couldn't touch them. So he he mounted them on the server, and I could uh, soft link to them, but I couldn't touch them. So they have a higher security level than the web admins and the DBA because they have root on a box. So once you get on a root on a box, man, them dudes be having a top secret clearances because they, they get to see everything. Because if you got a root on a box, you can get to the database. You can get to the web server. Yeah, you can get to you, everything. You, you, you the root. Now, as a web admin, I can't get to root. Some stuff, I got to call, hey, man, I need you to do this. I need you to call about this. I need you to mount this for me, right? So I just want to make people know that really the Linux admins a lot of times is at the top. Them and the architect, because the architect designs everything from a conceptual point by driving on the board. But the Linux admin builds all that. Like, he builds it, works with the sand people, works with the database people, creates the semaphores and all that. A lot of that comes from the... Once again, I work for a big company, so a lot of that's um, silo for who does what. But for mm -hmm. big companies, the admins at the top of the at the top of the heat. Go yeah, ahead. they top of the food chain. You're right. You're top. right. Go ahead. Go ahead. Nah, you you on point with that. I appreciate you adding that. Um, so uh, yeah, I was just gonna cover one more, just just showing you guys what they're looking for. Uh, and this is kind of what you want to do with any position you're getting into. Just look at the current positions out there and that'll give you kind of a guide of what they're kind of looking for. It's not going to be 100 percent accurate because six months down the line. And that's why you need to pay attention to it and keep paying attention to it and make the decision on what training and what you want to go towards uh, as you get through some of this stuff, because it changes. Um, so six months from now, after you went through, you know, X, Y, and Z training or whatever, um, it may have change of what they're looking for specifically. So, I mean, a lot, not too far off, but you want to keep, you know, staying on top of it. Uh, but like administration level experience, they want you to, they just basically list out a whole bunch of, um, distributions. A lot of these distributions work pretty much the same. I could tell you that, uh, like Red Hat. Uh, let's see, Ubuntu, Debian, that's all the same. CentOS, that's Red Hat. Uh, let's see, uh, Suzy, Linux, I, I can't right. remember. Isn't that, is that Fedora? I don't, I don't remember. I think that's Fedora. I ain't 100% sure. I'm like, yeah. yeah, I think it's Fedora. Yeah, and then uh, I've never heard of Portis. Never I heard of that. Either. I probably need to look into that. But um, yeah, Oracle Linux uh, and then Rocky Linux, that's basically Red Hat. So once you learn like the major uh distributions that are out there you can uh replicate the same thing on a lot of these other dis distributions yeah. so they'll just throw it out there i don't i don't even know why they listed them well, out like that they should have just said red hat Debian, <laughs> and, well, <laughs> and probably oracle well, well, uh -huh. well i think they listed them out like you said is i think as a senior they want you to know the nuances between that but like me as a as an oracle dba or a dba or as a web admin man I, like my man said, if I want to drop a drive, I could drop. If I want to delete, if I want to start, it. yeah, for me it's all the same. But I think as a senior, there's some nuances between there. I think they know. Like I said, I, I work with a guy, and he be knowing some little mm -hmm. minor stuff, man. 
Yeah, and that's true. It is like it'll be certain directories where things yeah. are installed, yeah. uh, certain configuration files in a different location, but the general gist of oh, the distribution right. is pretty much the same. You're like right, Debian, right. Ubuntu, right. it's pretty much the same. It's, it's 100%. it uses the only difference between a lot of these distributions really is the package manager. That's what distinguishes them to uh from others. So Red Hat uses Yum or DNF. Oh, facts, facts, facts. Uh Ubuntu and Debian, it uses the apt package manager. You see what I'm saying? So it's just yeah. different ways of installing because you can install something from source on all of these different distributions uh, without a package manager. You can just install it directly from source if no, the package is is um, um, if the package is um, designed for that that uh, system. The way the way it stores certain things as far as the root directory, it stores things in configuration files and certain things in different locations so yeah and that's why they they kind of i don't know why they just brought up yum right in here but yum is just a package manager that's just a package manager for red hat um and rocky linux as well so you know you see what i'm saying and then um let's see we got ansible puppet so that's that's really what i wanted to point out under here they're covering a lot of automation tools so ansible puppet i don't never use salt stack but chef you know i hear a lot spacewalk never heard of that one either no I'm not um, sure. chef and yeah. pup is big on aws you could pick yeah. your your and actually i'm an interview a guy that works for uh kenny he used puppet he's a puppet expert so okay uh, okay um, shout out to the chat uh i use uh i don't use terraform i use cloud formation i'm aws i'm everything aws shout out to tam i gotta master yeah. one cloud before i start doing multi-cloud who, who said that real quick <laughs> so now so i use everything i use cloud formation shout out to tech coach ralph um terraform is definitely on my list go check out will they're real big on terraform and ansible i'm everything aws so i'm, I'm cloud formation right now yeah yeah definitely yeah yeah and uh shout out to you uh tech coach ruffy yeah he he asked me as well i'm i need to just start working towards learning it bro i like i'm oh, familiar so with it i just haven't had the time to go in and and, and the, learn terraform the weird thing though is i use system manager which is kind of their low level that you can do in aws for most of the stuff i build or 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 if i'm a ramp something up my auto scaling is just gonna scale it across what I needed to scale at. So a lot mm -hmm. of times, like the one guy said, I create a gold image, put it in my auto scaler. Then if you know if I need more web servers to scale up, blah blah blah. So um, the the weird thing is, and I think you touched on it is, you gotta learn automation. That's that's the thing with artificial intelligence. A lot of the artificial intelligence is really automation that they put in there. Right. When I worked at DOD, we had five guys on a web team. Now with automation, I think I could do all this shit by myself for 200 VMs. Right. So mm -hmm. you're going to work smarter and harder. I don't think AI um, is going to take your jobs. I just don't think you're more efficient where you're not going to need as many people. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I agree. Um, um, shout out. Shout out to I see Dev Lou in the building. Make sure you go check out his channel. He's uh um a application developer and he started putting out videos oh. uh recently. I want to make sure I shout him out, but that's Citizen yeah. Lou, that's his channel. I'm glad you said about, I know my bad. I know who the hell that was. I'm like, who the hell yeah. is Dev Lou? <laughs> Shout out to Citizen Lou, go check him out. Go check yeah. out his channel. Go ahead and keep taking my bad. Nah, you good. <laughs> yeah. And then the Dell the says you <laughs> And then Adele says, uh, keep it techie. You are really a geek. Yeah. <laughs> I'm right there with yeah, I love this stuff, man. I love this stuff. It's it's fun yes. to talk about. It's fun to um actually work with. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. Yeah, check check out there. Yeah, Docker and um uh Kubernetes. It seems like Kubernetes is getting more hot than Docker. So I'm yeah. still gonna learn about I'm a Java guy, so Java usually goes in Docker, but Kubernetes is getting a lot of love. So I need to do research mm -hmm. to figure out which one's the hottest. So which one I need to learn first. <laughs> but I feel yeah. like Kubernetes get a little more pub lately. So yeah, and uh tech coach Rav, just to kind of answer a little bit more to your question uh on Terraform. See, a lot of this stuff, a lot a lot of these different 
like tools or whatever, they don't directly line up with my job. Like I said in the beginning, is I'm not a, uh, I'm 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 not a Linux administrator, and I, I'm not a systems administrator anymore. And so the training, I have to be very selective um, where whether it ties to what I'm actually doing or the pathway I'm I'm taking. You don't want to spend a whole bunch of money on search and stuff. I mean, it's good right. to to add to your repertoire. I'm not saying don't do that, but that's I'm more, a little bit more selective. That's why certain things like the Terraform has been kind of pushed to the side because I'm not a Linux administrator. I'm not working that much in the cloud yet. I'm getting there. Uh, but. I got to start off with these Azure certs first and then uh, look into AWS and probably CloudFormation, Terraform and all that stuff at a at a later time. I'm not going to let myself get too far behind, though, and that's one thing. You want to make sure you stay on top of it and try to prioritize what makes sense, you know, for what you're doing. But um, don't get left behind, though. That's another another point I wanted to make. So, but um, yeah, they, I just kind of wanted to cover a couple of these positions. I seen another one down up in here. I'm not gonna go through it, but uh, Linux Unix administrator. This is the one I think I saw something about. Um, That's the Air Force experience. Yeah, yeah this is the Air Force. You're right. Or what company is this? JT4. What is that? I think that's a contractor or something. Look about the contractor. job. Yeah, yeah. Look about the job. It says you got U.S. Air Force and Navy. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Range. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. I got you. It's all good. Um, it's all good. I just, but, you know, XDOD, I just see stuff like that. It jump mm -hmm. out. Um, hold on. Let's see. It was something I seen in here though, that I wanted to point out to people's, uh, let's see. Uh, maybe this wasn't the job. It was another job up in here, but anyway, um, I, you can go through and do this at your leisure or whatever. All I did was search for a Linux administrator and look at, and you do this with any of the jobs that you're trying to get into, try to find out what they're looking for and what you need to get as far as, um, um, the requirements for these positions. Now, I always go back to CompTIA. And so I wanted to go to the first cert I wanted to show you guys, and that's the Linux plus. Now, if you just beginning. You know, you may want to take uh, A plus, you know, or um, network plus. I, I always recommend network plus is it as kind of like a, a um, lower level requirement cert because you need to understand how these systems communicate within each with each other. Uh, but it's a little bit higher than A plus if you don't understand how the computer systems work. Period. Then take that A plus, and then possibly take that network plus or server plus, uh, one of those two. But this is one of the first certs I will point you guys to if you're trying to become a Linux administrator. Um, this one and actually um, the LPI. This one, the LPI certification, the Linux uh, professional certification that they have over here, those two are on the same level, in my opinion, as far as the information you'll learn for it. Now I'm a uh, CompTIA Linux Plus certified uh, and before, um, with CompTIA, I think in LPI, they had a, um, they w basically worked together. So if you pass the CompTIA Linux Plus, you would automatically become Linux or LPI, Linux Professional Institute certified as well. So you would get both of these certs at the same exact time because they basically covered the same information and they're both industry standard certifications. So um i think they kind of severed their ties recently more recently so you don't get that one for free uh without actually taking the certification but either one of these are good beginner linux certifications and if you want to add uh pbo you can no i think you're correct like i said um mm -hmm. no both of those no you're 100 correct um the two is you got to start somewhere man people freak out out man just figure out where you get in where you fit in and just start learning man it's not where you start is where you finish, man. So, yeah, yeah, exactly. I agree, I agree. And so um, after that, though, the next certification I would tell people to look at is probably a Red Hat certification, or you can go the Linux Foundation. And I kind of, the Linux Foundation certifications, they're tough, you know? They're not the same as Red Hat certifications, uh, which is kind of like the industry standard, but uh, the Linux Foundation certifications, they're they're good certifications to get as well. 
Uh, and I just kind of wanted to point those out, but you definitely want to get if the industry standard certification to get in and become a, uh, a Linux systems administrator. You have to go that red hat route. And like what we were talking about earlier, how a lot of these big cloud platforms, they're coming out with their own Linux distributions and all that mm -hmm. stuff. They're basically using Red Hat Enterprise Linux as the base of what they're doing. They're forking it mm -hmm. and they're using it uh, and making changes sort of running their cloud platform properly. Facts. No, 100%. They're putting some cloud hooks in it to make it you know, run a little better in cloud. But even if half the time you look at the... Uh, the directory still said red hat <laughs> so, mm -hmm. like, so no so like you yeah. said those base skills gonna transfer to cloud either one you pick so mm -hmm. yep and one other thing i wanted to point out and i always forget about this one but that linux foundation certified associate is a beginner certification you may want to look into it you know what i'm saying it's to me it's kind of like on the same level as the CompTIA Linux Plus, I believe with this certification, it's probably multiple choice as well. Yeah, multiple choice exam, 90 minutes. It's the exact same. It covers a lot of the exact same um, domain. So Linux fundamentals, system administration fundamentals, cloud computing fundamentals, which Linux Plus covers as well, security fundamentals, DevOps, uh, supporting applications and developers. So this is a good entry level cert as well that I would put, you know, right next to the Linux Plus and that LPI go, certification. Go ahead. Go, go ahead. back to where you were at. Keep it taking root. Right down go here, down the there. domains. Yeah, that, mm -hmm. and that's the, and that's what we talked about. And see, they got cloud in there, security, DevOps, and and that's the thing. Me and a manager talked about is as an administrator, your customers are the DBAs and the developers. Yep. Because their right. app runs on top of that. So if your stuff fails, everybody's stuff fails. And I think we used to have a lot of problems with our um, our Linux admin. I'm like, dude, you got to treat it because they were hard on the developers. I'm like, dude, the developers are your customers, man. I yeah. was kind of at a, you know, they call it integration team. So I had to go talk to him. I'm like, dude, the DBAs and the developers are your customers. Because what you said on top, they put all their stuff in there. Yep. So you it's, you can't work in the silo. And now with the cloud, it's even more acute and more prevalent, I think. And that's where you talked about two soft skills. And I think that's where a lot of the top uh, sysadmins and Linux admin, because when you have customer skills, it, it goes a long way. A lot of those guys are introverted and want to talk. I'm like, dude, you got to go talk to the developers. You can't developers come to you then you send them to me i didn't set mm -hmm. it up so i think that's uh once again just want to kind of the highlight is and that's why as a lot of linux and system administrator they start learning dba skills because we're talking to those guys working with those guys the two is once again they were carving up the disc and they were mounting them so they they kind of had to they had to understand all of that so like mm -hmm. I said, I got a couple, you know, Linux admins. I'm cool. I call them with Oracle problems or web admin problems because they set them up so much. They're like, oh, you need more SIMA4 locks. I'm like, I need more what? <laughs> <laughs> so no, nah, but just some of that. So I just want to kind of put that out is um, those are your customers. And once you get those skills, you're just going to keep scaling up and, and get more skills and adding that on top of each other. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Um and then this is kind of like that intermediate certification, just throwing that out there at night. Um, that kind of cover it basically covers and and one thing about this exam, <laughs> and this is why I say the Linux Foundation three, nine, uh, systems. Yeah. Yeah, it used to be more than that, three hundred and ninety-five dollars. Right now it's I mean, before it was shoot, they had this this cert like a thousand, it was over a thousand dollars. And yeah, then what they were selling it is um like combinations i guess they had to go down on their price because um it was more than that <laughs> wow because uh yeah. cis pay i think it's 800 man i'm like oof. yeah yeah and so but the crazy part about this test is not multiple choice at all it's all performance based oh my god That's so 
yeah, these are this is a tough exam. Uh, yeah, there's uh, based on what I heard, there are simulations on the Red Hat certification as well. Uh, on those Red Hat certifications, they want you to to was it almost performance based a little bit, but I forget what they call it. Uh, those other type, not just multiple choice. It's got the other types of questions that they ask yeah. you on there. But this I'm, is a mm -hmm. go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. No, you good. No, go I was ahead, just go gonna say this. This is a hundred percent performance based, and I think this one stands out um, as a good cert that'll weed out the wheat because they're gonna put a virtual machine in front of you mm. and give you. Um, I would say 20 tasks and I'm taking the certification. I failed it. Uh, but they give you like 20 tasks Man, or 25 shit. tasks and you have to go through and complete those tasks on that virtual machine. And then they go through and they check, you know, Man. after the fact, what are you completed? And if you, I don't know, missed a comma or something in there, or if you no. did something <laughs> Yeah, they'll agent. give you a percentage of it, but it ain't yeah, gonna, yeah. they're not gonna give you the full thing. <laughs> Facts. Yeah, uh AWS, their sysops, part of it's multiple choice, then 40% of it, they tell you gotta build it. So you gotta okay. tell you what you need to build, and it, it was brutal, man. It was brutal. So I feel yeah. Like, yeah, so I yeah, I kind of I kind of wasted some money. I didn't know. Um, no, nah, I wouldn't waste learning experience, man. We don't waste no yeah, money, man. We just yeah, learning, that's man. right. We just learning, that's man. right. We just learning. <laughs> that's we right. No money, man. Yeah, but um, yeah, I put that. I put the money into this cert, and um, I, I think I I bought it like a, cause they give you a year, and most of these certifications, when you buy it, you get like a year to take the test. And so you're, you're eligible to take the test within a year. So, and I didn't have the time at the, this was when I, I think I told you this, uh, PBL, I was working, I had just started another job and I was doing a lot of traveling back and forth between the job. And I didn't have time to, to go through and, and, uh, figure all this out to take this exam or study everything I should have studied. No, um, and I didn't have the time. So, uh, I failed it, you know, flat out. And then uh, I took it so late because I knew it was finna expire. I was like, ah, I spent money on this. Let me go down and take it. So I, I, I think it was like a week before the exam <laughs> expired. I failed it. I scheduled another one. They allowed me to schedule it outside of my expiration date because it oh, does wow. include a one retake. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And so I failed it the second time because I, <laughs> they Man. only gave me so long to. To that so study. long in between to um yeah to do the retake. No, nah, I feel you. Yeah, but this is a good certification. This will weed you out. This will let you know what you really don't know. You know what I'm saying, or uh, that you really know what you're doing. So I think this is a good cert to see, and that's why I'm starting to see like on jobs it'll say like industry standard certifications, uh, because this is a good cert. It's like I said, it's performance based, so it's. It's a difficult test, so they really know you know what you're talking about because of the the topics that they cover and the things you have to accomplish to get this certification. So, it's just my opinion, you know. Uh, do your research, check it out for yourself. And then I just kind of brought up a couple um, articles on different things um, as far as other trainings or other. Uh, things you need to learn based on those jobs that we look through. So this is Ansible. So you can check this out. This covers Ansible. I think I did a video a while back showing you guys how to get Ansible set up. Uh, I, yeah, I got one where I wrote a YAML script. You could check that out. I know it's like an introduction to it, but I did uh, an automation script to update multiple uh, servers that I had within my home lab. So that's on my GitHub if you guys weren't interested in it. But Ansible is super cool uh, to actually look into. That's the automation thing. Uh, Puppet, a lot of information out here. A lot of uh, uh, a lot of places you can get this information from. So uh, just search up what you're trying to learn. You'll find their their uh, site. You'll find other community like communities that cover this stuff. Uh, just look for it. And then um, Chef, I was gonna cover that. So Chef. Kubernetes, and really not really covered. Just showing you guys the the uh, places to go to get the training. So or the training as well as 
um, how to set a lot of this stuff up. So in Docker as well. So that, that was based on, you know, those job descriptions. Yeah, anything you want to add, though, Professor Black? I'm no, just, no, I think okay. you're hitting them. Those are all um, highly sought after skills and really anything. Um, DevOps, uh, DevSecOps. Um, because mm -hmm. even in security ops, we got to build stuff to make sure it goes on every server or check stuff to make it sure it's on every server. So all those skills are uh, super transferable and skills you really need um, on a, a multiple multitude of jobs. So now you're hitting them right on top. OK, so it is. So it's 100 percent performance based for Red Hat. I didn't know that. Hold on. Somebody that's said the that in thing. the chat. Yeah, somebody said that in the chat. Let me see. So it must be it must be a uh, uh, hundred percent. Let's see the Red Hat certified systems administrator exam. Oh crap! It's trying to give me the sign in or something. No, I ain't trying to do that. Uh, let's see training. I think a lot certifications. of people, A lot of people pushing that now too, because a lot of people would just be passing tests, man. And when they get on site, they be struggling, man. So, mm -hmm. A lot of people gonna start going more performance based. I think Azure is doing that. I know AWS uh, SecOps is, like I said, I, I want to say forty percent of that was performance based. So I think a lot of the um, certifications are gonna start going to that. Especially okay. if you're gonna say pick that over degrees too. So I think they're gonna definitely uh, push that more. Let's see. It don't really tell you. It's covering, uh, I guess, the course Red Hat Systems Administrator One. Um, designed for IT professionals without previous Linux administration. So this, okay, this course is based on Red Hat Enterprise Nine. Red Hat Academy. Academy. So this is just the course outline but what about this the cert i wonder why it's not allowing me to bring up the certifications uh let's see all certification let's see if that brings it up hmm, crap you block them man you got security on what's going on i probably got something going on yeah, with my... it's not like you're blocking some, <laughs> some yeah because i got rls or something man. yeah it got might your be your xdr edr you got your edr on man <laughs> blocking no nah, i got a um what they have Raspberry Pi running like uh, DNS or the okay. the Pi hole. So if it has like some some type of ads, which I don't think this site should have any ads. I don't no, think because it it's just like this Linux Foundation site shouldn't have any issues going to any of this stuff. So I don't know. But anyway, um, I'm gonna have to look that up later on to find yeah. out because I thought this was. I don't know. Maybe it is performance based. If it is, it is. I mean, so I'll that's figure it out later. Yeah, yeah. just yeah. drop it on your community. Hey, shout out to um, shout out to. Uh, Go ahead. Hold on. Uh, Savage scientist. He said IBM is going more um, uh, cloud to cloud. That's kind of their push. So they're trying to make sure making going between AWS and their cloud, making it easy for everybody. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I noticed that too. Shout out to Savage Scientist. Um, might ask me some questions in there. Yeah, uh, Lavar M DevOps. I'm sorry, DevSecOps. It's the new thing. I'm currently doing a little bit of that at my current job, so I'm trying to figure out what, what that what that entails. Um, mm -hmm. Sometimes developers don't like you put security on. <laughs> so that's always interesting, Lavar. Uh, come check me out. I got about three DevSecOps videos if you want to come check them out. So, um, go ahead, keep it taking. I was just looking through the chat and see what was in there. Nah, you good? I'm uh, hold on. I think I found it. I think I might have found it. Hold on, let's okay, see. Okay. Red Hat Certified Systems Administrator Certification Details. Here we go. All right, so. Let's see, audience exam. That's what we're looking for. So the performance-based Red Hat, yeah, so it's performance-based. They answered it in the first oh, wow. three questions. So it's performance-based. Okay. So 
<laughs> yeah, that EX200. So I didn't know it was performance based. For some reason, I thought, and maybe that's because I looked at it a long time ago. Um, mm -hmm. And maybe it was, uh, maybe it's always been performance based, but I, because I, I, I probably didn't look too deep into it because I knew I wasn't <laughs> going to be able to take it. <laughs> no, facts, facts. I'm right there with you. Yeah. So, but yeah, that's the new thing, though. And I, I think um, the future, that's where it's going to be, man. I think mm -hmm. um, we talked about that people are getting test dumped. So a lot of people, um, skills aren't where they need to be. So I think that's how people gonna they're gonna make you do more performance based stuff so which which makes sense i mean because oh, it, it you, you're right i mean it's some people are going there and i mean it's sometimes i mean and i've heard people do this is it's not difficult to go through a whole bunch of questions oh fine. and remember the answers you know what i'm saying and then go take the exam right away after going through those like tests because oh, it, it really doesn't validate that you understand the information or retain the information past that point. You see what I'm saying? With, oh, with this performance base, you actually have to think and figure it out. And that's <laughs> and oh, that's man. why, yeah, you actually have to think and figure it out. Like they'll throw a scenario in there oh, and say, hey, we need you to do X, Y, and Z. And in Linux, you could do things multiple different ways as long as you accomplish it, but you have to think through the process. And that kind of lets them know that you understand what you're doing. AWS the same way. They were like, set up an S3 bucket, keep all the traffic on the VPN and blah, blah, blah. And you have to, you got to go build it. You got to build your VPC, put your mm -hmm. sub that's on there. Um, set up your S3 bucket, uh, control the ports of what traffic can go through. Like you said, I give you a scenario and you got to build it in a DevOps. So um, I think they give you three. So yeah, so I was practicing to take it. So um, like I said, once I get hopefully past the CSP, I'll get back to it. But no, I mm -hmm. think that's the future, man, to uh, set it up. And two is it's really uh, kind of like a boot camp. If you go to boot camp, they're supposed to teach you how to build it. So when you take the test, they want you to be able to, like you said, read the scenario and build it. Because like, you know, you've been on a job, people give you requirements and they say, build it. This is what we mm -hmm. need. That's what we want. Sometimes you got to talk to the developers half the time. Hell, they don't know what they want. So. Okay. Yeah. Um, so that's that's really all I got. I know I covered a lot, and that's why I kind of read through some of it. I mean, most of the stuff you can figure out, uh, most of you guys could probably figure out on your own. I mean, it's just looking at the positions, seeing what they're requiring for those positions. And this is kind of what I do in and that's what prompted this whole live stream as well. Someone actually asked me about how do I become a Linux administrator? And I was explaining it to them that majority, I would say 75% of what I talk about on my channel, you not that's not going to help you become a Linux administrator. And that's why I pointed out, you know, um, like just searching Linux, a lot of it, it, it's it's going to show you desktop Linux stuff. It's not going to show you mostly, um, you know, Linux administration stuff. I mean, you may see my course up in there, like, bam, there we go. Free code count. <laughs> 1.6 million views. You might see that. You Shout know, that'll you. give you. Dinner on Keep It Tech you for the 1.6 million views. No, I'm just <laughs> no, but you'll see these crash courses out here. I'm not the only one. Learn Linux has one, I think, oh, out there. Right. Yeah. Um, Free Code Camp has another one up there. I think they put up that's more recent. So, I mean, but majority of the content you're gonna see, like, just showing you guys some. Of, well, I'm not even sharing the screen right now. I was gonna say, just, what are you showing? <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, my bad. No, you can, yeah, you can. but just just showing you guys right here if you guys can see it. But um, I just searched Linux on YouTube. It's gonna bring up ninety percent of this content that's gonna come up is desktop Linux, people talking about different desktop environments, what they don't like about them, things that could be improved about them. You you might see a course like mine. That's what I was saying earlier. <laughs> or this other one by Free Code Camp they got up there. Um, 
And but majority of it is just gonna be a hey, a versus you bunch to 23.04 versus for door 38 or and it's all desktop Linux. And it's nothing wrong with understanding that it's a different type of crowd, it's a different crowd. So you got people that just use Linux consumerly, kind of like Windows. You buy a computer, you got Windows on it. They use Linux the same way they would use Linux. I mean, Windows. It's right. just a consumer operating system or desktop Linux is what, what most people call it. But the other side of it is the administration stuff that you'll see. Um, and you have to distinguish the two. Yeah, and so I'm about to I'm about to shut it down, PBO. Unless you got anything else you wanted to, I don't know, talk it. about or put or some high level stuff. Just uh -huh. start, man. Linux. I, I learned Linux. It's been years ago, but my boss said, get on it and just do it. Don't don't cheat. Just get on there and do it. So, and people think I know a lot of Linux. I know about 15 commands, man. If you know about 15 commands, you can do the majority of the job. And the rest of that, you can just man page it. Um, mm -hmm. yep, like I said, yep. once again, though, I'm not a Linux system administrator, right? I was a web admin and a database admin, right? So, yeah. Um, so let's so, but so you got to start somewhere. So, and once you get on there, you create the directory, move a directory, uh, BI. I'm so, I, people vim and I'm still BI and I'm so old, man. So, mm -hmm. you get, get you some corn shell and a little set or not. You'd be off and running. And the cool thing is if you do it in the cloud, a lot of that stuff, the cloud automation is going to do. And when you get on actually on a VM, you're not going to really need to do a ton of stuff on it. All right. And that'll yeah. give you time to get back. Because like I said, when I put my Apache on it, Amazon does all that. Don't tell my be out get on the boxes when something don't work. Like, okay, why mm -hmm. my script didn't run or why didn't something start or do P my PS minus uh so I can look at the services running. You know, OF, so I can look at some open files. Like I said, it's like 20 commands and you'd be off and running. Um, two is keep it techy showed you those are the skills and you need Ansible or some kind of automation. And you've seen in there, each one of those admin had a um a database they want that they put on there because once again, they work with the DBA, so they need to understand those databases, semaphores, open files, the how many all that gets in the config files. The, once again, the admin set that up, not even the DBAs. But once again, that's a great skill. Um, it's going to help you. Once again, I do cybersecurity, and I got to do security on the uh, Linux version, Red, Ubuntu, whatever, Fedora. So you need to understand the basis of it so you can at least do the checks and talk to the uh, Linux admin with some sense of you know what you're doing. <laughs> but once again, Happy Monday. Let's get it going. No time learning like the presence. That's all I got, man. Yeah. <laughs> That's all I yeah. Got. Yeah. And shout out to you, bro, for actually coming up. And I see a couple of questions that's popping okay. in. Let me go down there. Uh, we we yeah. could both answer them together. Let's that's see. Cool. Uh, Christian Rodriguez, he says, what's your take on community college certifications? My local community college offers okay. a cybersecurity cert or program. That's I'm, I'm assuming that's what you mean. That mm -hmm. includes CompTIA A+, Network+, Plus, Linux+, Plus, and Security+. Plus. And um, my thoughts on that, um, that's a good start, especially if you're, especially with like A plus being in there is like one of the first certs, uh, that'll get you set up, you know, understanding how all these systems work. And then networking is very important. And Linux is used in cybersecurity as well. Like you'll see Linux a lot more uh, in the cybersecurity side when it comes to pen testing or um, bug bounding, as well as assessment of networks. You'll see like they even created a like, they even created an, another Kali Linux out there for people um, for defense. So purple, purple Kali, purple, purple, regular Kali, yeah, for five, red five, team. Five, so five. Um, and the blue team, you know, uh, you'll see Linux used a lot there. And then Security Plus is to me that require that that's kind of like the, I always talk about the DoD when it comes to Security Plus because that that's like one of the minimal search you can get to five. satisfy that eighty five seventy uh, requirement. But uh, if you want to add a little more, go ahead. Oh, I got to. That's that's to me. That's the blueprint. I taught ten years at a community college. Uh, that sound like the college I worked at, where you would take the course, then you would get the certs. Because the uh, community college I worked at, uh, it's a two-year program, but 
I said we, they made sure you can transfer to any large college. I'm going to say in the state of Indiana. So you talk about Purdue University is a top 10 college. Notre Dame, our community college transfer credits to Notre Dame. Uh, so we made it so it makes it easier for you to keep uh, upscale. So for me, that's the blueprint because uh, if you do community college work from home, your debt's going to be zero or really low. Um, I'm old. I'm not trying to step on the yard anymore. That's 1989. So um, if that's really the blueprint, unless you want to go to a, a HBCU or go to a PWI and incur a lot of debt, if you're not trying to step and make connections, to me, that's the blueprint. Get to community college. Then you can go to school and work at the same time. Have your employer pay for your community college. You off and running. Then a lot of times you can get internships and externships at the community college. I'm actually going to do a video. I'm going to buy Keep It Techie. That's part of the I, one of my blueprints, I think, you need to do, especially because when I went to college, this shit was cheap, man. College expensive as hell. Go ahead, Keep It Techie. I'm going to get off the soapbox, man. Boy. Nah, you're right. You're right. You're right. <laughs> um, and that's one of the reasons we always talk about over here as well is uh fundamental certifications though that a plus that plus you know what i'm saying is is or good fundamental certifications that'll get you and it and it doesn't matter what direction you go even by taking a cyber security um program that you're looking at if you don't if you realize that you don't want to go into cyber security all those certs will help you in other areas so it's a good start just like what PBO said. And then next question I see, Enthusiast Techie says, uh, is container technology like Docker or Kubernetes, Kubernetes use? And yes, it's, yeah, oh yeah. it's very much so. Hot, uh, hot. Yeah, and that's why I showed those uh, positions um, on LinkedIn, Just and there was just a few, I know, but just keep looking through them. You'll see Docker, Kubernetes, Ansible. They want you to learn some form of automation and virtualization uh using docker and and kubernetes you know with those content the containerization so oh, yeah. it's it's being used heavy yeah and all the developers they want to go to it we 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 tell some of our developers pump the brakes so they're testing their apps with kubernetes right now so we're trying to make sure the security is up to gate and we're ready to build it right mm -hmm. so you got to have your shout out to somebody the devsec ops we got to make sure the pipeline's right because kubernetes because <laughs> you know it's 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 uh building itself turning itself down what's the security on it i don't i kind of know how to secure kubernetes so i got to get up to speak because container security is a little different not a little it's different in cloud security and on-prem security so um, yeah definitely hot though um so from security perspective you, um, i'm gonna start doing videos on how to check the security how to stig it or do CIS checks to figure out what's hard. I do have the hardening checks for Docker and Kubernetes. Because mm -hmm. once again, uh, we have some people in uh, proof of concept. Somebody reached out to me and said they were doing a proof of concept. So I was sending them some checks. So Okay. And um, I see, uh, hold on. John Wick, hey, don't shoot me, man. Don't shoot me. Uh, but John Wick, 825, he says, uh, Bro, I just I got finished uh, setting up my Linux lab. Uh, keep in mind, I'm switching careers at the moment. I've been MS systems engineer for the last okay. five years. Uh, I sleep in Linux now. Bye. Yeah. Yeah. You you ahead of the curve, bro. I mean, you are really not switching careers because right. systems engineer, you know, a lot of times. Well, you'll start seeing at least now, especially in the cloud, you start seeing Linux more. So, um, but yeah, if you want to become a, a Linux administrator, I don't know. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you I already think, in it, you know. Yeah, I think I think like we talked about uh, multi cloud. Everybody's mm -hmm. multi operating system. Some things run better on Linux. Some things run better on Windows. The thing I think that's hardware is a lot better. There's a lot of stuff I would dare and dare never run Oracle on Windows. Now I might because the hardware is just so much better. When I was doing it 15 years ago, Windows didn't scale that well when you had uh, multi-threading apps and stuff like that. But hardware, and now too, in in the cloud, hell, you can spin up 100 VMs and just split all your your, the, your job work that you need to do. So it's a, it's a different world. But no, I think you need to be multi-OS like people are multi-cloud. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, let me see. It was something else I seen. Let's see. What's the what's the biggest challenges you face with your Linux environment? Uh, assess the pain points 
um, you'll help solve. Um, I don't know. Majority of the time with, with like my environment, if it's something and I break it, I just rebuild it. But that you, obviously you can't do that in a production environment. You can't just, <laughs> unless no. it's like some Docker stuff. I don't know. You could just yeah, rebuild the image. Doing, we ain't going to yeah. let you do that in Docker. <laughs> but yeah. Could, yeah. No, no. <laughs> um, but but my some of my challenges is just um, from being a Java guy a lot of times, just figuring out how to increase the memory that you can get to a Java app. Once again, op- um, a lot of times their default settings not big enough. Um, I try to run big apps, so you got to figure out where you put your max open files, just just small stuff like that. It, it, it's small when you figure it out, but when you're looking for it, <laughs> it's big. So I, I think, and that's why I tell people, build stuff. Even if you build it for yourself, once again, I try to do a couple AWS. It might cost me 5 or $6 a day, and I try to build something big that's going to say, oh, you, you're using too many files. Well, how do you increase the file section? Oh, you didn't hook to an Oracle database. You ain't got enough open connections. You're pegging, right? Mm-hmm. And two is it's called sticks. It's called hardening. Somebody put it in. I try to go through actual setup and actually go through and stick it, which means hardening up to DOD levels. So when I go on a job or go on a site as a consultant, I've done that before, even if it's in a lab. Shout out lab every day. That's what uh, Network Brush shirt said today. I'm to get that for my man, Dewan. Lab every day t-shirt. So. But oh, no, yeah. that, that, that's what you need to do. You need to grow it up. And two is just minor stuff like that. A lot of times in uh, Unix, you'd be running. You're like, oh, my, my stuff's not working. You look in the file, it'll be like, you have exceeded the open files. I'm like, what What open files are you talking about? But no, nah, but that's why you live. That's where you grow. That's why you need to try to scale it up to a certain size. Too. Go ahead, keep it tech. You just, what, you nah, you on point. You on point. Um I'm just trying to think of some of the things I've ran into and and see the I haven't ran into anything in the production environment because I've 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 seen the systems, you know what I'm saying? I've connected to the systems in the production environment, but I wasn't the one administering that server. It was, it was another team or so. Yeah, oh, and so yeah, it you like I me never really mm-hmm. government should be having a whole nother team, it'd be a whole nother division almost. You yeah, think you have to put in a ticket. And yeah. Put, uh, so, but 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 that's but once again, as a web admin, I gotta work with them. So that's why yeah. we're both in production. So if my stuff not working. I'm snitching on. Hey, he ain't set it up right. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I'm just playing. But nah, that's how you get good though. Nah, you're right. You're right. You're right. And so, I, I think I, the only just Go real ahead. quick, I I know one of the top guys in the Midwest. He he's so good. He um. Cause you know you got your regular account and your admin account. He actually did some work on his regular account, so he emails me. Right, I'm I'm the I'm the security guy. So he said, "Hi, Tom. Um, did you see me in a log?" I said, "What you mean, man? I I ain't see you in a log." He said, "I was doing stuff in my regular account." I said, "Bob, we 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 ain't set up that good yet. Won't nobody know unless you tell us." He said, "Well, I put a ticket in on myself. He put a ticket on himself. He said I put a ticket in. I'm gonna send you the logs because when you sudo under us." When you sudo under a uh, privilege account, it logs everything you do. He said, I, I switched over to sudo. I'm going to send you out a log so you can see what I do. And then you can uh, write it up and uh, file it. i like, Bob, I'm not doing that. <laughs> I'm like, I'm no, tired. <laughs> yeah, but he, I'm going to try to interview him. But he just said, he's like, oh, I did it. So I'm like, Bob, only you going to report on yourself, man. So Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, Bob, I'm, I'm, I'm not writing that shit up, Bob. <laughs> yeah. But, um. Yeah, so Cardin, that you right, Cardin. Uh, implement te- security tech in the guideline corner. This is stick. Yeah, I used to work for DOD. Most people know me, so uh, network bro was in here, so I try to give him a stick the other day. So I try to do uh, federal compliance around the manosphere. That's my mm-hmm. claim to fame, Carter Jones. <laughs> Go ahead, keep it take. <laughs> yeah. All right, you good, you good. Um, so, um, that's that's pretty much all I wanted to cover today, man. Um, I'm if you guys cool. wanna wanna uh, hit me up, uh, like I said, I do um, I do mentorship Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So you can just click the link. It's on my 
uh, community tab. If you guys want to talk and talk about your situation, I could uh, help you. And uh, like I said, I'm not the the expert, you know, hundred percent expert. I don't go around as an expert. I'm learning a lot of this stuff too. You know what I'm saying? But I can give you my advice based on the experience and the time I've been I've been actually working in the field to help you move forward. You know, and be successful. So um definitely do that if you want to you know what i'm saying um and also professor black ops you hit up any of these guys that i've shot out throughout this video you know i'm sure they'll help you uh as best they can so hit them up in the various ways they allow you to and um they'll try to try to help you out as well you know what i'm saying like i said don't just lean on me I'm not 100% an expert on everything, so lean on those other people as well, and get get as many as many perspectives as possible to help you make the best decision possible for your situation. So, yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of ways to get in this industry, man. Nobody's gonna be 100% right, ain't ain't nobody's gonna be a perfect match. And I share keep his techies thing, so definitely go check him out. And if you need to hit me up. Uh, and I, I'll be working in this Discord. So if you got any questions, put them in Keep It Techie Discord. I'll be out there answering security questions. Yeah. It's not a lot of your Discord. I think I asked you two or three. I'll yeah. be working for I was in network, bro. <laughs> I'll be in everybody Discord working. Shout yeah. out to everybody. So, yeah. But, no, nah, like you said, hit me up. Hit him up. Um, definitely check out his uh, MySQL course, um, too. Like I said, it'll definitely pivot over to aurora which is their version of my sequel um i think that's gonna be the next bag dba is in the cloud i think is another hidden gem we're gonna hit on another <laughs> another stream yeah. later but once again yeah. it's uh, monday let's go it's out there to get bag education i might try to give me some young hot and cute too before i get out of here everybody have a <laughs> everybody have a great weekend that's all i got keep it taking. <laughs> all right pbo good good to have you up here boy i appreciate it all right yeah. man i reach out anytime you need me man i'm out <laughs> okay all right peace peace yeah and i see uh i see female day says uh uh if you ain't an expert keep it taking then i better go back to hiding under a rock you are too humble i dare say <laughs> it's all good man hey yeah and just like what pbo just said man I'm, I'm glad he comes up here i definitely appreciate him his support and uh um and his insight on a lot of the topics you know what i'm saying i know he he's super on point with it he's he's the og he's been you know in the game longer than me um and he he helps me with this stuff as well so i definitely appreciate it but shout out to everybody that came through i definitely appreciate all the support shout out all the people that donated all that good stuff and if you just you know getting here uh go down and hit that like button uh but i'm finna shut it down i definitely appreciate all you guys come through and and this is the highest amount of people that actually came through on the stream i never had this many people here before so right at 50 you know people which is is super cool it's is accomplishment in my opinion you know i always i never looked at my i don't know i never look i never expected nothing like this you know what i'm saying so but i appreciate all the support love and all that good stuff but um it's you know the end of the week end of the weekend you know monday morning let's get out here and get this money you know get some training uh go through whatever you need to be successful you know what i'm saying and of course keep it taking